In this example, we're going to look at apparent depth. So I give you this setup. Uh, you are the little orange smiley face. Uh, you are looking down into some pond and you see some orange fish. Now the orange fish is actually a distance s below the surface of the pond, but the image of the fish is not necessarily going to be a distance s away. It's going to be some distance s prime either above or below the surface of the pond. We don't know. And I'm going to label the indices of refraction n2 and n1. So if there was no boundary, light would bounce off the orange fish and travel in a straight line right to our eyes. But since there is this boundary between the air and the water, light is going to refract at the surface and the image is not necessarily going to be in the place we expect. So due to this refraction, uh, the image of the fish will be in a different position than the fish itself. So how do we handle this situation? Well, we can look at the equation for refraction at a single surface, where n1 and n2 are the indices of refraction, s is the object distance, s prime is the image distance, and r is the radius of curvature of the boundary of the system. Now, we can't just plug in values willy-nilly. This equation applies to a very specific sign convention. So let's go through it. The Cartesian sign convention says s is positive for objects on the incident light side. The incident light side is where the light comes from. S prime is positive for images on the refracted light side. Refracted light side is where light is going to. And R is positive if the center of curvature on the uh, is on the refracted light side. So in this case specifically, the refracted light side is the air because that's where light is going to. The incident light side is the water because that's where the light is coming from. And the radius that we're actually interested in is the radius of curvature of the Earth, which means R is negative. And so in this case, you'll see that if we're above the water, S prime is greater than zero and S is less than zero. If we're below the water, S is greater than zero and s prime is less than zero. So starting off with our equation, we have n1 over s plus n2 over s prime is equal to n2 minus n1 divided by r. And in this problem, we're going to make an approximation. The radius of the Earth is very, very large, far larger than any of the distances we're dealing with in this problem, s or s prime. Therefore, we're going to take the radius of the Earth as infinity, which means the expression on the right hand side is going to be zero. And that'll give us an answer that is very, very close to what uh, the actual answer is. So it's going to equal zero. Then I'm just going to do some rearranging and I get S prime is equal to minus N2 over N1 times S. So remember the negative sign means that the image is below the surface and that's exactly what we see in real life. So in this problem, suppose we're dealing with air and water. So instead of writing n1 and n2, I'm going to write n air and n water. The index of air is about 1. The index of water is about 4 thirds, 1.33. And doing a bit of algebra, I get s prime is equal to minus 3 fourths times s. So what does that mean? It means the image is below the surface of the water, as we expect in real life, and it's about three quarters of the way down. The fish is a little bit deeper than what you expect. And a few final thoughts. Uh, number one, the image of an underwater object appears closer to the surface than the object itself. And number two, we have to pay close attention to the sign conventions when we're dealing with optics problems.